Hi, this is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. There is an amazing uh, story on, uh, on Elijah the prophet in the Gemara, in the Talmud. One of the righteous ones went, walked with Elijah the prophet, and um, while they're walking, they saw a dead body on the ground. And it was very old and rotten and, and smelly. And there was nothing to do with it. And immediately Elijah ran, ran and started taking care of the body and, and burying it and moving it from one, one place to the other and, and doing whatever it needs to, to be done to, to help that poor dead person to find its rest finally. And he didn't disgust from the body and nothing stopped him from doing whatever he needed to be done. And that's it. And that righteous man that walked with him was very impressed by how determined he was. And, 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 and then they walked and suddenly there, a person is walking toward their direction. And Elijah the prophet is holding his breath and closing his nose and saying, I can't stand the stink of that person. Come, let's walk away. And he's taking that righteous man with him. And they're walking away and like, how can it be? And so he asked him, from that dead person, from the body, you didn't discuss nothing. And that person, like, maybe had some odor, some bad smell, I don't know what. And you so disgust from him, couldn't breathe, couldn't stand. He said, no, no, that person was arrogant. That's why the stink was so strong. The arrogant of a person make him stinks. <laughs> so, yesterday I gave a class, I was talking about humility and explained how humility is the only vessel that a person really have To hold the purity, the holiness, the divine spirit of Hashem Barach. And I explained that the importance of the difficulties and challenges that we're going through in life is to bring us to that, to humility. Because after we're failing, and even people like us that are failing thousands of times a day on things that we clarified already, I don't want to do that anymore, and again you're falling in the same trap, in the same pit, thousands of times in your life, and like, you look at yourself, you're crazy, like, you know it, you don't want to do that, and you keep on doing it, and over and over, and thousands of times, and in the same place, with the same people, same situation, and been embarrassed so many times, and like, only crazy men will do that and in the in the, the in the the prophets I don't remember in which book but it's written Kekelev on the last generation Kekelev Ashavel Kio that the generate the, the face of the last generation Pnehadoke Pnekelev will be like a face of a dog and the explanation is what what is what does it mean a face of a dog? Like a dog that after he pukes, he goes back after two seconds and for him it's food. Like, oh, he's got an option now, it's a new meal. For, he doesn't realize, oh, I just puked it. No, he's like, he's, he's so silly, he's so disconnected from rea to reality that like, oh, it's an, it's an opportunity. He forgot in a second that he just vomited that disgusting thing. For him now, it's a meal. So we're the same. We're failing and, and, and going back to our humiliations, to our shames, to our destructions, to things that are destroying, destroying our own spirits, shaming ourselves, breaking our self-esteem. And we're going and causing it to ourselves again and again, breaking ourselves. And you look at yourself and you say, he's nuts, he's crazy. Like, <laughs> I wouldn't do it and you do. <laughs> so I explained yesterday that the purpose of all of this craziness is to bring us to that humiliation, to be humble, 
not in a negative way, just that it is clarifying above all doubt that we are zeros, that we're nothing, that we are really not able to control ourselves and to take decisions. And when you realize that, how far you are and how weak you are, so then you become humble, you become a vessel that can contain the bounty of Hashem, the holiness, the purity. Now, it's written, Kifum Tzara Agra, corresponding to the sorrow, means to the how much you sacrifice, to the effort that you put in life. That's how much you will be rewarded on your effort. If you see an ant that, um, that drags the peanut, you will be impressed. Why? Because it's such a tiny ant and it's able to carry a whole peanut on its back, dragging it with all its power. Wow, you will say. Even though that it's a tiny peanut and you can, can, can hit it with your tiniest finger and it will fly for a few meters, and it's nothing for you. You'll see an elephant carries a peanut on his back. It's a joke. It, it, it fell on its back. It doesn't, it's not a, like he doesn't carry it even. Why? Because of his size. But the end, because it is so tiny and so small, you'll appreciate its effort because that she is small, because that she is weak. Now we can find ourselves suffering and in great pain and sorrow and struggling for our lives. And when you check yourself and you look, you say, hey, you live such life of luxury. There is no reason in the world in, that you will be so upset, so sad, so depressed, so confused, so suicidal because of what? Like nothing. Everything is perfect. But you are losing your mind. Inside your own mind, there is a crazy war that no one can stop and no one can heal you and no one can understand you and no one can feel what that you're going through. And that's why also no one can judge you. And it's better at least that you won't judge yourself and criticize yourself because you might be like that tiny ant that even a peanut for you is too much to deal with. It makes you nuts. It makes you crazy. Because you're so weak. Now the fact that you're weak is not your lacking. It's not your fault. You as a soul came in a certain mission down to this world with a certain body with a certain cargo, emotional cargo, certain pains that you experienced in life, family, community, friends, neighbors, whatever, your own evil inclination that messed up your mind with horrible feelings and with horrible life experiences that shaked your stability and brought you to a place that today you're done. You might be 20 and you want to die. Like you can be wealthy and married, 35 years old, in your own house with three children, and can't stand life, can't deal with it. Like your faucet is, is leaking, is, is dripping, you're done. Like you, that's it. I can't handle that. Nothing happened. It's tiny. 70 years ago, people went from one camp to the other, starving after losing all their families, seeing their children being slaughtered. And after all of that, two camps, they survived and they went to the U.S. and built families and made billions of dollars. And like, what? Which souls? What power? Are they? Where they came from? How? What? I will die. Yes, it's not your game. It's not your story. You're a different creation in a different zone, with a different plan and, and a different mission. And you cannot compare yourself to no one else because there is no place to compare. Because you're going through something else. And this is why we're not allowed to judge another person until we'll reach his place. And his place means his inner connection with Hashem, what that only Hashem knows about you, your real qualities, your real inner abilities, who you really are. Because one person will do something and it will be considered a horrible sin for him to do. And for you it's not a sin at all. Why? Because you didn't learn about it. You've never been taught. You've never been educated. you never experienced those kind of things. You, it, it, it happened to you and now you need to deal. For you the test is different. For you the test was not not to fail. For you the test is how to deal with the humiliation of after failing. And Hashem will not judge you on the failure itself. Your challenge is how to deal with life after failing in that challenge. And the challenge itself, it's not your sin. 
Your test now is not to fall to depression, is not to drown your sorrow in alcohol, in drugs, it's how to, to stay sober, how to, you fell into the drugs and into the sorrow and depression or whatever, and now you need to drag yourself out of that swamp of despair, and you need to drag yourself and your fingernails to win another step and another step, and to try and to hold on, and not to kill yourself, and on that you will be rewarded on saving life of, of a person, and... You are not being judged like people are judging you. And especially not like you judge yourself. Because you don't know who you are yet. And people around you for sure they are blocked and ignorant from understanding the struggles of your spirit. What you are really going through inside your mind. And that's it. And in that moment, in that point of understanding, a, per can, a person can start his growth process. He can start growing spiritually, emotionally. Only when he comes to a deep understanding about himself, I'm good. I'm good. I'm okay. Even though that I failed a million times in my life. Me for an example. I, no one can count the number of failures I failed. I'm, no one. Even my wife that she's got a phenomenal memory and the special power to remind me of my failures. She doesn't remember all of them. <laughs> For sure she would kill herself, jump from a cliff if you would remember all. She doesn't thank Hashem. Even her that she's my reminder and she's my rebuker and she's my teacher and she's coming all the time to do this perfect job. She can't remember it all. You cannot count the number of failures. A secular person that grew up in a secular family, a person if he will judge himself on every foreign thought, on every sad thought, on every negative thought, on every Lashon Ra, on every lust, on every desire. No number to those things. There's no number that you can be judged on. So like, to make you an ashes, it won't be enough. Like you need to, to I don't know to do what. It's not, it must be that that is not our sin. That those failures are not really our sin because we can see clearly that even after failing in the worst, worst failures of them all, what that really happens to us as a result of those failures is a huge awakeness. We're coming back to Hashem from those humiliations. And we know that one sin drags another's, another. So if really our sins would have been so bad, really, they would be the thing that makes Hashem angry. So after we would sin a few times in our lives, there wouldn't be no hope for people like us, sinners. No way to come back. Because you're sinning, and you're upsetting Hashem, and then you keep on sinning, so you're upsetting Him more for the, for, for, for the argument. For, for an example, trying to say, let's say, if we're, while sinning, making Hashem upset, so from one day to the next, we should have been more rejected and more rejected and more rejected. But we can see clearly that in the worst days of our lives, we're coming to huge understandings and huge clarity. And Hashem is sending His messengers straight to our houses, to our hearts, to the most filthiest places, while we're Googling, while, while we're, we're like checking our Facebook pages and whatever, suddenly you find inspiring sparks that are reviving your dead soul, your despair soul, your, your sad and, 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 and crushed soul. And some lifelines and, 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 and salvations are penetrating the darkness and saving you and pulling you out from your humiliation. So... You are being rewarded now. The love of Hashem, the love of your, the Creator to you as His creation is being revealed now and you're not being rejected and punished. You're being called and loved and gathered and welcomed. And we can see many, many messages like those, many memes and many videos and many clips and many, many speak, speakers and friends and books booklets, many, many sources of information, of positive information that is giving answer to those ones that fell to the lowest place on earth, to the lowest, most impure, and most contaminated place in the universe. And those souls are receiving a handmade, gentle treatment, treatment from the Creator Himself, individual supervision on those souls, and He's petting us, 
He is calling us. He is inviting us and revealing himself to us how unique he is and how special he is and how loving he is and how patient he is. Nothing happened and you can start over and I love you in that way and in that way and you have more options and more options and the world is huge. Many outlets, many, many ways, many lanes and suddenly you, you feel that you're being redeemed. How come? Because really the Creator doesn't care about the physical failures of us. Rahmanah Libabai, the Creator, He cares about your heart. He's looking and staring at your heart to see who are you, how you behave, how you react. In times of crisis, who you are. In times of success, who you are. When you're receiving compliments, how you react. How do you feel about those compliments? When you're being ashamed, how do you react? How do you feel? Do you hate? Do you have grudge? Do you want to revenge? Do you despite? Do you want to kill? Do you love? Do you feel bad with yourself? Do you want to fix yourself? Are you trying to take responsibility? When you fail, and when you fail again, and then when you fail again, what are you doing? And when you're standing in the tests of life just to be human, to work out of the power of your soul and not based on your fears and your stress and your pressure, and you work on yourself, by that you're revealing the holiness of your soul. You're revealing the essence of your true creation, of your real nature, of who you really are. That you are an eternal soul with good qualities only. A prince that made out of good stones, only good stones, only marbles and pearls and diamonds and, and rubies and that's who you are. You are full of good qualities and Hashem wants those things to come out from you and for that those humiliations and difficulties are the most required thing in our life and we can hate it, we cannot want it. But it's only because that we have a problem of arrogant that we don't want to be humbled. But the truth is that when we are being humbled, only good comes out of it. Because after you struggle for years, suddenly you have more compassion and more sensitivity to other people in a similar condition. Five years ago, you would laugh on a person like you. You would mock on him. You would laugh at him. You would make a joke out of him. You would think that he's crazy, that he's worthless, that he's hopeless, that he's nothing. You would look to his direction. And today, you feel for him. You care about him. You understand exactly what he's going through and where he's coming out from. Because that you experience, it made you human. It peeled your shell. It peeled your armor. And it revealed your holiness and your purity, who you really are. Your true colors are coming out from the darkness. It means that you're getting purer. It means that the husks that were surrounding you in your past are not affecting and not blocking the light of your soul anymore. That you are not that person that you were pretending to be. That your real personality is coming out to the light right now. And that's the purpose of our life, to become who we are. That the light of the Creator will be revealed through us and that we won't block that light from shining the world with the light of Hashem. Now Hashem sent a beam of light, a unique and an individual, only one of those exists in the world and it's your soul. He sent it into your physical body and He wants you to let it express. He wants you to let it shine. He wants you to let His beam of light glow from within. That you will express your godliness. That you will express your senses, your feelings, your emotions, your art, your talent, the talents, your abilities, your wisdom. That you will talk from your life experience. That you will share from your, your life experiences. That you will Allow yourself to laugh and to write and to sing and to dance and to talk and to be who Hashem made you. Because you are a creation of Hashem. We are creations 
of Hashem. And as long as we're not accepting ourselves, we're not accepting Him as our Creator, we have a problem with our home designer. We have a problem with our Master. Because He made you exactly who you are and with your life story. Not only to be with that height, with that colors, with those colors, with those abilities, with those experiences. Also your character He gave you to children in the same house and received the same situation in a total different mm, approach, a total different feelings about it. One accepts it, one hates it, one can't forgive, one already forgot. And one denies and one is stuck in it and cannot move his mind from the problem. Everyone are different in every family. I have two brothers. I don't know how you can find the connection. Like, <laughs> one is there. <laughs> one is there. <laughs> and, and I can't find myself yet. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how you can understand it. Totally different people grew up in the same house, same parents, same environment, same, same family. Barely you can find something in common. Maybe the love, maybe the will to be connected. And, and except of that, foreign, different people, different life stories, different, ask them questions on their house. They're going to answer to you total different answers. How was your father? Different answer. How was your mother? Different answer. Who she was, who he was, n nothing, nothing the same. Won't answer the same answer ever on the same question. Lived in the same house, ate the same food. Was it tasty? No. Yes. Was it good? No. Yes. What's the answer? You don't know. And especially me, that no one is communicate with anymore, so I'm not answering. So you have yes, no, denial. Yes, no, denial. <laughs> it's not like three answers. Nothing. You must accept yourself. You must understand yourself. You must become your best friend. The gift of people that are getting married is, is in a deeper way, in a deeper layer, in a deeper level, because then those two souls that been one soul, they have the opportunity as well to share from their experience and they can be used for their partners as speakers to, to tell them how they feel. Like sometimes the husband can't feel something or he ignores a certain feeling, he's afraid to deal with it and for his wife it's very strong and she's expressing it. If the husband will have the merit he will hear his own emotions being expressed from her mouth. It can happen also to, 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 to every other person in, in an honest conversation with a friend, with a brother. Like you're talking to him and suddenly you hear yourself through his mouth. It's when Hashem is connecting the souls. That's what that happens. Usually when you hear words that you accept, that you understand, those are moments of grace. Those are moments that the Creator made a wonder that He reveals to you that spirituality is above nature. That He's showing to you that your soul can shine from other people, that your souls are connected, that you have something in common because it's supposed to be that really there will be no connection between people. That, that's, that's how it's supposed to be under rules of nature. Because from the moment that you, are, you have your own source of life from within, and you have your physical body, you have your own ears, your own eyes, your own nose, your own whatever, thoughts, mouth, senses, so you grasp reality in your unique way, in your own way. So from that moment and on, there's nothing in common anymore with a certain other person that experience everything from a different angle. It's 100% supposed to be 100% different. Because he's experiencing it from different channels, from different ears, from different eyes. Everything is different, different thoughts. Everything is different. All of his background, all of his life story, all of his character, all of his persona, everything is different. So all of his filters are different. So he's filtering everything differently. So his conclusions must be totally different in 100%.
But when Hashem is bringing peace between people, when Hashem connects the souls, so then you can see that our souls and our real being is above nature, that we're spiritual being, and that we are attached and we are connected. And the bodies are only an illusion that shows separation, but really our connection is above the bodies and our soul are 100% connected. And this is how righteous people can be connected to a certain divine spirit that they can know everything about you, that they have the ability to understand everything, and they can even tell you things from different lifetimes and tell you things that they never experienced in body. For an example, certain times in my life I experienced that with r real righteous people that I spoke with, and they knew things about me without reading my eyes and reading my thoughts, and like it, I, it was clear that they were just connected to my spirit and they realized things in very deep layers and they were uh, uh, they they had that merit to be a channel for 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 the creator to 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 pass a certain information to me from a divine source the biale rebbe for an example i said it many times I came to him and I spoke to him and he told me, he cheered me up, he told me, but that prayer that you prayed in that night when you were over there, and he mentioned to me my prayer and used my own words. And I was alone in that night doing my own it but do that night in the middle of the night in the graveyard in, in Bnei Brak in Israel, on the grave of a righteous man, Rabbi Yudha Zev Levovich. I was praying over there on troubles of Am Yisrael, I was praying, and he told me, but those requests that you ask on this and on that, and he's mentioning my own prayers. He had the access, the ability to know, to recognize certain things that I experienced alone. I didn't even text no one on, 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 on that. Like I was, I was alone with Hashem, I was alone with myself, I was in the middle of the night crying and begging and asking Hashem for a certain salvation in a certain situation. And three months later, four months later, he's telling me, but those prayers had a very huge impact and they brought big salvations and, and he knows what he's talking about. And I never saw him like for six months early before, uh, before of, of my prayer, like at least one year ago, something like, how? Because Hashem gives the information that is needed and required to those ones that are worth it to those ones that are holy, to those ones that won't use that info information and that knowledge to damage no one. And He gives an access to that information to those ones that are humble, to those ones that are righteous. And like we said before, you can look at an animal that will be so tiny and weak, and you will be impressed from her power uh, and, and her will to drag something that is supposed to be very small like a small peanut but you will be impressed because compared to her power it's a huge effort that she's putting and you look at a different animal that will carry the same and you won't appreciate it on it why because for him it's a joke so the truth is that she will be rewarded on her effort corresponding to her effort to her real dedication to her real will and we ourselves also like that. And that's the way that we should judge ourselves. With eyes of truth. It doesn't have to be favorably. It does, it's to be really connected to reality. Like I'm saying many times. To connect ourselves to Hashem is a word. Is a concept. It's still hanged in the air somehow. Because He will tell you learn Gemara. He will tell you keep Shabbat. He will tell you eat kosher. He will tell you be completely observant. You need to be a righteous man. Man de natarbrit. Whatever everyone can, can say whatever they want. Without this you can't have it. Without, and so to say connect yourself to Hashem. You need to ask yourself what does it mean for me to connect myself to Hashem. And after you understand what it means for you to connect yourself to Hashem, what it means to be connected to Hashem, to the Creator of the world, to the source of good. So then in that moment you should ask yourself, what is really connecting me to Hashem? How am I being connected to Hashem? 
There might be certain things that some other person will do and he will claim that those things are connecting him to Hashem and they might even do something good for him, really. And when you're trying to do the same thing, it's disconnecting you from Hashem, at least based on your senses, senses that Hashem gave you, your ability to feel yourself. One will tell you, you should do Aliyah, you should make Aliyah, you should go to the Holy Land, it's our only home, it's our only hope. Okay, great, I hear you. And you try and you go and you feel like you're in a, in a, in a Muslim country. You can't find your hands and your legs, you don't know what to do with yourself, you don't have friends, you cannot communicate, you feel everyone are, are, are scamming you, everyone are laughing. Like, it's a, it's a one individual's experience. Like, so okay for him, what he should do. He should die there in the desert? That's okay. No, that's what Hashem wants from you to suffer, to die. Yes, no. Can be. Hashem wants me to also have sweet lives. Hashem, oh, well, Hashem wants me also to get married. Hashem also wants me to make money to pay my bills. Hashem doesn't want me to suffer now, because I don't speak the language, so I need to suffer because I've, I have a different culture. I, I, I used to different luxuries, different things. So now I should die? No. It's not Hashem's will. So what I'm going to do, but everyone are talking about Aliyah, everyone are talking about Shabbat, everyone talking about Kashrut, everyone talking about waking up midnight, everyone are talking about waking up before dawn, everyone are talking about synagogues, everyone <coughs> talking about Filin, everyone talking about one page of Gemara a day, everyone are talking about the Zohar, Midrashim. Okay, what do you want from me? I don't know, I can't find myself yet. So there must be a way for me that I can find my legs, I can't recognize between my right and left yet, that I still don't know who I am, that I don't feel connection, not to this and not to that, and not to the third and not to the fourth, and I'm disconnected from all those things, but I still feel that I have an inner connection to something, and that thing is very important to me, it's the connection of my soul. So you need to believe in yourself in that moment and to ignore other people's opinions, no matter what they say and how right they claim to be. You just need to have that faith in yourself that you know better, and doesn't make you better than them. Just that you must believe that you can sense your senses. A student asked me a few days ago, he said, I don't feel comfortable when I'm going to synagogue. I feel in this community people are not welcoming me, people are not smiling to me, I feel bad, I don't feel right. I'm going to the synagogue, I feel everyone are looking at me, no one is smiling. Am I feeling right? Like I, I feel like it's better for me to pray home. Is, is, uh, is my feelings right? Are my feelings right? I told him, your question is wrong. What do you mean are those feelings are right? Those are your feelings. First of all, that's how you feel. First of all, your feelings are your feelings. Of course they're right. That's what you feel. Now what to do with it? Okay, we can discuss, we can talk. The importance of going to synagogue or maybe to talk to some people, to solve the problem, to go away, to walk away, to find the different solutions we should find, but not to hate yourself, to fight with yourself on your emotions. First of all, you feel rejected when you walked into that synagogue. You felt not welcomed in that place. Okay, now, first of all, don't have a problem with your feeling. That's what you felt. And there's a reason for that. Maybe because of your low self-esteem. Maybe because people really were not so welcoming. Maybe it's a mix. But first of all, if you felt something, you cannot ignore yourself. Hashem gave you senses. Hashem gave you the ability to feel. He gave you emotions. And even if they're super radical and super sensitive. So to ignore a sensitive person, that's crazy. To go with his craziness also doesn't have to be the right solution. But to ignore his feelings? He's disgusted from something. He can't stand fruits on the table. He wants to puke. He can't. Okay, so what? Now, no one will eat fruits because of him? No, but also to put fruits in front of his plate is also not a solution. So need to understand him and to respect him and to put, make considerations to his condition to try to be as sensitive as can be, and also to help him climb up, grow above his issue with fruits, and slowly, slowly to balance this situation, but need to work on it. And the way to work on it is not to tell him, no, you must, and to shove fruits to his plate, to shove fruits to his mouth, to force him to eat it. It won't work. It will increase his rejection. 
It will increase his feelings of rejection. He won't be able to deal with it for the rest of his life. He will be traumatized. So you need to understand him and you need to help him with silk gloves, gently, slowly, slowly, and to help him. That's how you have to help yourself. You have to accept yourself. Have to love ourselves. Even if we are judging ourselves and we're criticizing ourselves and we have so much grudge and anger and ha inner hatred about, and, and, or an awful opinion about ourselves and already executed ourselves thousands of times on our, on our so-called failures, it's only coming from ignorance. All of our low self-esteem is a result of us following other people, ignorant people, foreign thoughts and negative opinions about the world and about us. And you're not supposed to be a follower of negative people. You're not supposed to follow negative approach, negative opinion, criticism and, and a hatred and, and, and horrible, horrible way of thinking that that's not the word I'm able to say um, I'll try Criticism? what no categorize okay. Curriculum? what no 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 okay. close to no. categorize categorize us that's not the right way because they're making separations they're making dividings they're putting you in a certain point with certain limits and defining you and closing you and, and, and blocking you in a certain, um, with a certain title, with a certain name, with a certain nature and, 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 and limiting your ability to grow and to change. I spoke a few days ago with a person, a woman. She was telling me on issues that she has with her husband. And I told her, if you really appreciate him, you should talk to him and tell him that he needs to change, that you feel that he is ignoring certain things that are very important to you. She started laughing. I told her, why you laugh? She said, I gave up. I gave up 20 years ago already on those things. There's no way. He lives in his own bubble and that's where he spends his life and I accept him and that's it. Like they have so-called peace between them, but really they're not sharing everything. He lives in his bubble, she lives in her space, and they're meeting once in a while, communicating once in a while. That's not, real, that's not real peace. That's not a real connection. It's not that it's not real, it's not complete. The doors, the windows are not open. The information is not flowing. And she said, what, what, what do you expect me to do? I want to help him. I tried. I spoke with him thousands of times on that topic. And I tried, literally, I tried. And it doesn't work. He didn't hear. He's not able to listen. He cannot understand those things. So I told her, I'm not accepting what you said. I'm sorry. She said, why? I told her, because if I will accept what you said about him, that he cannot change, really, that he cannot change, because you fell to his claims to his to 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 him justifying himself to his excuses oh i keep forgetting oh you fell to despair if i will fall with you to despair it means that i should give up on my own hope to fix myself and i'm never going to do that i will work on myself until the last day of my life to fix myself and ever to back off from that. And I will apologize to my wife thousands of times more in the future because I'm not about to stop trying to fix myself. And to know that I can stop from falling and from failing, it's not something that I know for sure. What that I do know that I can put the effort. And if I will give up on him like you did, I will have to give up on myself as well. And I believe in Hashem. I believe that Hashem loves me. And in my faith in Hashem depends my hope. And if I believe that the Creator of the world is in touch with me, He chooses me to communicate with. And He's telling me things. And He's sending me messengers. 
and he's sending me messages and he is hinting me that I should believe in him and that I should pray and that my prayers already been answered and that more of my prayers will be answered in the future. So it means that he is always cheering me up and pushing me toward my faith in him and my faith in myself as a result of that. My faith in myself and my faith in him are one. I believe in myself because I believe that he loves me. I believe in him because I realize that he wants me to believe in him. My faith in myself and my faith in him is one thing. So to believe that someone cannot change, it's not to believe in Hashem. Because Hashem can give him that spark and that energy and that power to uplift his life and to refresh his life and to restart his life and to do tshuva. And if he is refusing to surrender to those humiliations and to the rebukes of life, and he's refusing because of his arrogance, so it's his problem. But it doesn't make the situation impossible. Even in his last day, he might do tshuva, if he will want, if he will choose to walk in that path of tshuva, to admit and to be humble, and to let those humiliations penetrate his shell of honor, respect, and all of his fears from, from admitting the truth and whatever. But if he will surrender, really, to the truth of Hashem, to the divine will of Hashem, he will see that the truth will set him free. And he will feel comfort after being insulted and after being ashamed. Because those humiliations are just removing our husks. They're just removing the blocks and curtains and walls of separation that are blocking the true light of our souls. And when the light of our souls is shining finally, so there is no pleasure that is higher than that, that you can be who you are. All of our sorrow and all of our pain is coming only because we cannot, that we find it hard to express our real inside. That we're not who we are. Why you suffer in company? Why are you afraid in your, in your business? Why you have troubles with your family? Only because you don't feel comfortable to sit and to laugh and to say your opinion. Because you cannot express your emotions. Because you cannot talk on this and you cannot do this. And you cannot say that and you cannot... So you cannot be. So you feel that the walls are pushing you. And then you feel out of place. Then you feel narrow. You feel pressure. And you want to go. And where should I go? What should I do? And you can't find yourself and you go and wandering from one place to the next and you're being rejected and exiled from yourself. That's your problem. The only problem that we have is that people feel that we are wrong because they have never found themselves yet. They are walking with that flag of criticism and negative opinion, judging and criticizing everyone, judging and explaining and interpreting and, and categorizing every single person and situation in the world. They're putting a tag and a name on it and blocking it and sealing it and that's how they're making their lives easy because they never penetrate their own true selves, never really found themselves and they're finding it much easier to kill everyone else instead of healing themselves. But for ourselves, for people that are willing to deal with our fears and to confront them, that are willing to find our true souls and to express them, so for people like us, there is real no place between those surroundings that are judging and blocking our way from becoming who we really are. So we must find our way out. So we're going. So we're going. So we're going to find ourselves. So you open a business and you go and learn out of town and you try to go in a different yeshiva or to make a liawa. You try to find yourself out of your prison out of your family, out of your community, out of your neighborhood. And that's the commandment of Hashem to Abram. Lech lecha me'artzecha mi'bet avicha. You should walk out from the land, from your land, from your home, hometown, from the house of your father. Where to? To the land that I'm going to show you. To the unknown. To the place that I'll show you. It will take few years. It will take a lifetime, you don't know, but you should walk away from all your chains, from all your fears. 
to find yourself. Lech lecha, go to yourself. Go find yourself. Lech lecha me'artzecha, go to seek for yourself. Go to yourself. From your hometown, from your home city, from your community, from your people, from your friends. Me, I did tshuva only because that I joined the army. Only reason. Only because when I joined the army, it was a different, different atmosphere, different life for me. I was able to be myself much more than I was between my best buddies, my best friends and my family. With them, I was obligated. I was committed. I had my role. I had my job. I had my position. I had to be who that people expect me to be. I couldn't be myself and I hated that and I felt it, it was wrong, it was twisting and breaking my mind to pieces. I was not able to be myself and then I joined the army. <sighs> no one knows me. I can talk. I can be. And I felt much more comfortable, released. I was able to express my thoughts. I was able to communicate, to hear, to listen, to share. And also to learn, I was much more open-minded to hear people's opinion because I wasn't supposed to think all the time what my friends will think about me. What my... I was terrified before and I realized it only when I was out of that situation. Only when I made it out, I realized how much I was suffering when I was in. In my own house, in my own town, with my own friends, with my own buddies, driving to... Sfat on our bike, smoking weed in the beach of the Kinneret, happy! No, not happy. Criticis, criticism is floating and, and, and bad jokes and judging each other and expecting each other and planning and scamming and everything is under the table and you have roles with this one and different with that one and with everyone you're pretending and you have conversations and that people won't know and that people won't think and that... You're not yourself. You're suffering from not being who you are. And when I found myself out of that obligation, I could start my process of finding my true self and also found the power to fight for my true self. Really to rebel, really to fight against those ones that tried to shut me down. And I finished relationships and I cut many many relationship with people if it was friends if it was family many many things I changed and only because that I found a reason to only because that I made it out for an hour for a day for a week I escaped and that escape saved my life and after a while I found more and more about myself and I received from it more reasons to invest in my inner search and today there is no doubt about it after a few years that you're investing and that you're finding and finding and finding now you know exactly what's your art what's your profession what's your destiny what's your mission in life and and you feel good about yourself and you know what you're doing you feel complete and only because that you took that courage to deal and confront your fears and not to let other people's opinion to narrow your, 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 your path, to close your, your, your options, and to tell you who you are, and to define your future, and to describe your character, and to tell you what you're supposed to do with your life, when they really don't have a clue about life at all. Because if they are holding in a place of educating you and fixing you, it means that they don't know anything about themselves. They're not dealing with themselves. A person that knows himself, he knows that he is an individual that is unique and he will try to let you find yourself because he doesn't want you to be like him. Because he knows that he is the only one that is him. And he knows and recognizes in you your qualities. And he wants you to be you. He doesn't need you inside of him. He needs you to be you. When you will be you, you'll be happy and he'll be happy. He needs to be himself and you need to be yourself and he doesn't have no problem with you being different than him because he doesn't need to justify his own way by making soldiers and, and copies of himself to justify him, his approach and method. 
Oh, be like me, and then I'll feel that I'm surrounded with more similar people like me. And then it's an evident. Billion uh, Chinese cannot be wrong. No, they can be wrong. There is no evident in the fact that that's a group, Breslev, Chabad, Litvish. It, it, it's not an evident. The fact that there are 2,000 people or 200,000 people doesn't make them right. They have a huge rabbi, they have a big teacher, they have a chief rabbi, Admo. Doesn't make them right. You can see that Admo in the middle of the night crying to Hashem and begging to him to save his life because he doesn't have advice. He doesn't know what to do with his child that is consuming drugs on a daily basis and he doesn't have no advice. And his daughter, she's gay. And he doesn't know what to do. And he's Admo and he's got thousands of followers and he knows the truth. He and his wife, they know the truth. Their daughter, she's gay. What can you do? <laughs> Nothing to do. Cry to Hashem. Hashem is breaking us to pieces that we will recognize the real nature of creation. The real way to connect yourself to Hashem, like we said, Hashem, it's a concept. You want to connect yourself to Hashem? You need to find your inner connection to your inner truth. Find the truth, you'll find the Shem. The rea real truth, reality. Who you really are. When you will find that, you found the Shem already. You have a Shem. A Shem is in your pocket. A Shem is in your heart. A Shem is the blood that runs in your veins. You found a Shem. You found yourself. You found the truth about yourself. You know who you are. That's it. What's the first question in heaven? They're asking the person in Judgment Day. What's your name? That's the question. If you know your name, you're connected. That's it. You're in heaven. Just know your name. Know your essence. Know your name. Know who you are. Who are you? Who you really are? If you're start, no, me. It's a whole story. I'll tell you. <laughs> Nonsense. Next. <laughs> Liar. Pretending. Making up stories. Me. I started my life <laughs> in prison. <laughs> Who are you? Piece of junk, piece of earth, piece of mud, water and, and earth. Who you are? Who are you? Leprosy body, impure body, in the shape of the snake. The snake is being described as an animal with two legs <laughs> standing tall. This is the snake. There is a deep midrash, a crazy midrash, a blowing mind midrash, that is saying that when, the, when Adam Arishon, when the first man, after he sinned, they were only spiritual bodies. They, never, they didn't have skin. They didn't have no physical body. And they sinned. And Hashem said to Adam Arishon, I'm deporting you. I'm, I'm exiling you from heaven. So Adam asked Hashem, what, what should we do? So what do you want me to do? I'll, I'll be outside. All the outsiders, all the demons, the husks outside, they will eat me alive because I don't have no, no shell, I don't have no armor, no skin, nothing can protect me. What should I do? So Hashem told him, go and ask a body from all the animals. One of the animals will give you its body. And he went to the zebras, to the lions, to the giraffe, to the hippos. He asked everyone, give me your body, please. And everyone told him, go away, what do you want? Like, no way, I, I need it, it's mine. He said, no, but look, I'm being exiled now, outside, in heaven, you're going to manage, but me, outside, no one. He came back to Hashem, told him, listen, I can't, I can't, I don't have a body, I'm terrified, they're going to eat me alive. He told him, go to the snake. Hashem told him, go to the snake. Hashem went to this, uh, Adam went to the snake and told him, listen, I need your body. You failed me. You see, you, you made me sin, like, and now I'm going to be exiled. I need a vehicle, I need your body, give me your body. So the snake told him, wow, I'm so touched by your speech. Your words have torn my heart to pieces. You're right. I'm apologizing for sure. I'll give you my body. Give me 10 minutes to prepare myself to say goodbye to my delicious body. And I'm giving it to you. I'm handing it over. No problem. And Adam went so happy and grateful to that wonderful snake. And the snake put all the most modern device speakers and, and HD systems and all of the, the input and outputs that he could, everything he put installed in that body, speakers and screens and sensors that can mis mislead you in the way, every single 
uh, missing signals that he could plant in that vehicle, he planted and put his unique mic in the brain and gave it to him. And Adam dressed the body of the snake and wait, went out from heaven. And when we're looking at the mirror, you look at the impure, the contaminated body of the snake. This is it. Hi. You want to see the devil? Hi. Look at yourself. That's, that's your devil. The laziness and the tiredness and the anger, you feel it in your flesh. And rekevat samot kin'a and the jealousy and all the bad midot are all stuck in the flesh. And foreign thoughts inside your mind all the time are the thoughts of the evil inclination that all the time tells you you're filthy, you're ho hopeless, you're horrible, you're a liar, you're so pathetic, you're so disgusting, you're ugly, you don't have no hope, you're for sure gonna fail, look what you've done, and judging you and criticizing you from inside, from your brain, from those speakers that he planted inside your body. It's not your body, it's only your vehicle. And on Moses it's written that when he was 80 years old and the Creator revealed himself to him in the first time in the burning bush site, in that vision of the burning bush, Hashem told him, Take off your sandals from your feet. And the Zohar HaKadosh is interpreting that, that Hashem told him, tell, told Moses, Remove your impure body, your contaminated body from the leprosy of the snake. It's the body that's been impured by the snake himself. This is the body. This is the physicality. This is what that is blocking our real being, who we really are. We don't have a soul. We are a soul. You are your soul. That's who you are. You are your unique and individual soul. That's who you are. And you are trapped in an impure vehicle. Trapped in a cell, in a body that is impure, from the leprosy of the snake itself. That's the snake. It's the body. And you can feel that it's a snake. It's getting hot and it's getting cold and it's getting angry and he wants to revenge and he's tired and he wants to sleep. And when he's asleep, he's dead. You cannot wake him up. And it's a body. It's not you. It's not us. When you want to find yourself, you need to get rid of your body. To get rid of your body, it's to reconnect yourself to your soul. The way to connect yourself to your soul, it's to connect yourself to reality, to the truth. And the truth is the link to Hashem. Who is Hashem? Hashem Elokechem Emet. Hashem, He is the truth. Now you want to find Hashem? Don't look for Him inside Shabbat, inside Masechet Shabbat, inside Sugiyot of Shabbat. Find Hashem inside of yourself. Hashem is not external. Hashem is not outside. Hashem is your soul. Hashem is pnimiyut. Hashem is within. Hashem is the light of your soul. And all of your surroundings and all of those curtains and all of this crazy sin that is surrounding us, all of that is the way that the Creator is hinting us to have an inner observation, to find ourselves from within. All the signs, all the signals, all the messages, all of our life situations are calling us to look into our own eyes. Look and stare into your own eyes. Look deep. You'll find your true soul. You'll find your true connection to Hashem. Your true connection to Hashem is not an external connection. It's not an outside connection. It's an inner connection through your lifeline, through your inner channel, your inner rope, to Hashem, through your soul. That it's a beam of light of Hashem. Chelek eloka mima'al, part of heaven from above. A godly soul. Neshama elokit. Godly soul you are. And it's the truth. And to that you need to connect yourself. And not to all criticism and opinion of other people. And not to your self-patterns that you fell into by listening and following to people that fell to their own patterns because of other people patterns, because of other people generations patterns and ancient, ancient sin of Adam being exiled from heaven to the darkness of this world. 
We are a result of the exile. Your body is weak and tired and broken and cracked and burnt because of thousands of years of exile. It's not your fault. Now you're on a mission not to surrender to that tiredness, to that darkness of exile, just to reconnect yourself from that place through your soul to your source, to your divine source, to Hashem. To who that Hashem is for you, to your Creator, to the one that gives you life, to your hope, to your salvation, to the answer to all your questions, to be answered on all your prayers, to see your salvation with your healthy eyes. That all your prayers, that all of your beloved ones, that all of your surroundings, that everything around you, that you will be that messenger, that beam of light that will shine from within and wash all darkness that is surrounding you. For that you need to reconnect yourself to your source of energy, to the soul that has been given to you by the Creator that believes in you, that knows that you're capable of succeeding of expressing the godliness that He treasured inside of you by being honest, by being kind, by being generous, by being yourself, your true self. Not your scared self, not your terrified self, not your sad self. Because those are not your real self. Those are the reactions of your emotion and of your physical body to life experiences that you experienced in this lifetime or in different lifetimes and traumatized you and scarred you, hurt you, and now you're reacting automatically. It's not who you are. It's your body defecting you, defending you, attacking everyone around you, blocking, shutting people's mouths, don't let no one answer, don't let no one argue, blocking, closing, answering, laughing, mocking, criticizing, judging, ignoring, ignoring, fighting, denying. Not yourself. Yourself, no fear. No fear. Breathing, answering, thinking before you talk, feeling, sensing, understanding, deep thoughts, Deep self-awareness with a purpose, with a goal, with good, pure intentions. That's your real self. And it's you. And you're afraid to express it. So don't. We need you. <laughs> we need you. <laughs> we need you to be you. We need you. That's who we need. We need you. We need more like you. One more. One more like you, one more like you, one more like you. We need me. We need every single one of us. The world would be boring without so many colors and so many shades and so many. If it wouldn't be so as colorful as it is, it wouldn't be as beautiful as it is. Hashem made every face different, every eye different, every fingerprint different. Why? Why in the world there are no two oranges that are similar, two faces, two fingers? Why in the world there are no two faces similar? To tell you that you are unique and that you are part of this puzzle exactly by being that part that you are. Don't try to change it. Just connect. And then the light of Hashem will shine. And then you'll understand your part. The most magnificent puzzle in the world, the one billion parts puzzle. If you lack one part of that puzzle in a dark corner that no one cares about, you will care about it. You'll hate that puzzle. You can't be happy with that puzzle. It's not complete. The Torah, 600,000 letters of the Torah, amazing, written by the most righteous author, Sofer Stam, in the world. One tiny letter is missing, disqualified. It's not a Sefer Torah. It's nothing. It's not a Sefer Torah. It's not complete. You cannot read. You cannot use it. It's disqualified. It doesn't have the holiness and purity and the uh, um, uh, spiritual weight and, and, and power and it's energy because of one letter missing. That letter is you. We miss you. Come back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. 
please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.